So we're going to continue our series in the book of Acts. If you have your Bibles, you can go ahead and open up to Acts uh, chapter 26. And I just want to give you a, a little bit of a sum up of what ha what's happened. So in Acts chapter 21, Paul makes his way back to Jerusalem. Everyone had begged and saying, Paul, please don't go to Jerusalem because bad things are in store for you. But he's like, listen, guys, I've got to go. The Lord has called me and I am going to be a witness with boldness in this city. So he goes to Jerusalem. He goes to the temple and begins to worship the Lord. And a bunch of the Jews from Asia had followed him into the temple and began to spread lies about him, saying that this is the guy who has gone all over the world and is telling people to not follow the law of Moses. He's got, they start spreading lies, saying that he had brought Gentiles into the temple. And so they dragged him out, got all the people in the area in a frenzy, and they began to beat him. Some of them didn't even know why they were beating them. They're just like, hey, everybody else is mad. I'm going to be mad too. Have you ever seen that before in life where somebody else is mad and all of a sudden, well, I guess, darn it, I should be mad too. And so we're going to get mad and get indignant and stop our foot and get all upset. And so they were all getting upset and they start beating and pummeling Paul. And then the Roman police show up. They try to disperse everybody. They grab Paul. They put a human shield around them and they're trying to escort them, you know, into the police station and the people are just going crazy. They're just yelling. They're throwing stuff. Bottles are, are being thrown. You know, all kinds of stuff. Rocks. There's a riot breaking out in Jerusalem. We've seen that on TV, you know, but we see all this stuff that's happening and so they lift Paul up on their shoulders. Like, we're gonna keep this guy safe and they're carrying him and people are going crazy and I love Paul in this moment. They're the police are trying to escort him to safety, get him inside the police station so people can't beat him anymore. And he says, fellas, hold on a second. I got something to say. I mean, they're throwing bottles and there's rocks and they're shouting, all kinds of things happening. He's like, Mr. Policeman, just give me a second. Give me a moment. I have something to say. And so then on the steps of the police station, not, you know, not really a police station, but he's standing there and he begins to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. He begins to testify saying, look what the Lord has done in my life. Even in this moment where everybody's against him, everybody's stirred up, they're trying to kill him. He says, you know what? This looks like a good opportunity to share the love of Jesus. This seems like a good opportunity to let my light shine. Man, and if the apostle Paul can be that way, how much more can we in our lives let our light shine in every situation to look for that opportunity to share the gospel? So he shares, and they're like, man, they get so mad at Paul. They're like, this guy doesn't even deserve to live. They're so upset with him. And so the, the Roman police, they're like, we got to get to the bottom of this. And so the, they had, you know, their interrogation pro process was, hey, we're going to torture this guy until he tells us why these guys are beating him. And so they rope him up. They're getting, they're going to spread him out like, like this, and they're getting ready to go at him. And he says, hey, guys, let me tell you something. I am a Roman citizen. And all of a sudden, fear hits in them. And sometimes we got to announce who we are, to know who we are in Christ. When the enemy wants to come against us, when he wants to harm us, when he wants to destroy us, you got to remind him, excuse me, Mr. Devil, I am a child of the living God. I have been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. The same power that rose Christ Jesus from the dead now dwells in me. So God Get back where you belong, under my feet. Amen? Amen. So he reminds them of this. He reminds them of this, and they're like, get scared. Like, oh, man, that's how the devil does. He gets scared when you remind him who you are. As long as you stay ignorant, as long as you don't remember, he goes at you. But as soon as you remember, and as soon as you confess it out of your mouth, my friends, he starts to run in fear. And so then what happens next? You know, he, they say, well, listen, we got to take, we're taking before the Sanhedrin. We're going to get to the bottom of this. Paul being very masterful, he, he gets in front of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Well, listen, he says, guys, 
The reason that I'm on trial today is because I believe in the resurrection of the dead. And so this got these guys all fired up because the Pharisees believed in the resurrection of the dead. The Sadducees did not. And so he was masterful. He got them fighting with each other. They're all upset. So the Roman police were like, man, we gotta get this guy out of here. Take him to safety. And so they, they, they take him over uh, to Caesarea and they're gonna bring him to Felix. And so Felix being the politician that he is, he's trying to find a way that he can profit in this situation. And he's trying to get Paul to give him a bribe. He's trying, and, and what he does is he actually locks up Paul uh, for two years waiting for this bribe and hoping that gained favor with the Jewish people. Uh, and he actually gets voted out anyways and Festus becomes the governor of, of that region anyway. So it doesn't work out for him. So let that be a warning to every politician who's listening. You know, when you try to, <laughs> it's not gonna work out for you in Jesus' name. And so, <laughs> And so, so this entire time, again, he uses this opportunity to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ again. And so he come, he, he's talking to Festus, and then they said, you know, King Agrippa, who is the, 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 um, the appointed king from the emperor of Rome uh, in that area, he wants to come and hear uh, what, is, what the story is. And so then this is where we find ourselves in, in, in Acts 26, where Paul has been in prison for two years, and he's getting ready to go before King Agrippa and Governor Festus and he's gonna share, and again, he uses the opportunity to share the gospel. So in, in Acts chapter 26, beginning in verse one, it says, then Agrippa said to Paul, you are permitted to speak for yourself. So Paul stretched out his hands and answered for himself, I think myself happy King Agrippa. And this is gonna be the message today. This is the title of the message. I think myself happy. Paul had been wrongly accused. They tried to beat him. A riot started. He was wrongly imprisoned for two years. And the first words that comes out of his mouth in that moment is, I think myself happy. And we can imagine that, you know, from a lot of us, you know, we were in that situation, we would be pretty ticked off. You know, some of us can't drive down the street and somebody cuts us off and we get outraged and angry and we got to tell everybody about it. <laughs> I absolve you, brother. Okay, so, <laughs> just teasing. But so, but anyway, so he, he goes, he says, hey, listen, I think myself happy. I don't think myself mad. I don't think myself sad. You know, I don't think myself frustrated. I don't think myself wanting to get what is mine in this moment. He says, I think myself happy. See, in this moment, we find out that happiness is a state of mind. Now, in the Bible, we hear about also the word joy, and so I kind of want to talk really quickly the difference between joy and happiness. Joy is part of the fruit of the Spirit. The Bible tells us that God gives joy every single morning. It's made new every single morning. And so the fruit of the Spirit of love is manifested in joy in our lives. But so it's like, I want you to imagine you have this well that's full of water, but you know, but in this case, it's filled with joy. It doesn't do you any good while it's in the well. It's really good that it's there, but you have to go and access the joy. How do you access joy? By rejoicing. When you rejoice in the Lord, you grab a hold of that joy and it comes out. And what that does is it changes the state of our mind, which can come out as happiness. Now we can be happy based on things that are happening, circumstances in our life, but circumstantial happiness, you know, it only lasts for a moment. I'm happy because I got the new car. I'm not happy when it breaks down. You know what I mean? I'm happy that I got the new job. I'm not happy until I get to know my coworkers a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm happy about whatever it is in, my, in your life, but it's based on circumstances. But we can have a happiness that's based on the state of our mind that can come from joy. Now, even somebody in the world can do this, okay? Not to the same degree as we can, but Abraham Lincoln said this. He said, we are as happy as we make up our minds to be. That happiness is a choice. It's found in our will. We can choose to be happy. Now, if someone in the world can read a self-help book, go to a self-help conference and be able to think themselves happy, how much more should we as believers who have the wellspring of life, joy abundant that we can grab a hold of and allow a happiness to be inside of us? 
I'm gonna give you guys a lot of scripture today. So you've gotta you pull your Bibles out, get a notepad, put it in your phone, because I'm, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. I wanna build your faith this morning so that you can leave this place thinking yourself happy. Wouldn't that be good? Yeah, I'm not gonna go through my week thinking myself hap, ha, sad, thinking myself mad, thinking myself frustrated, all worked up about this or that. I'm gonna think myself happy and trust in the Lord. So I'm gonna give you the tools to, so that you can do this for yourself today. So Psalm uh, 30 verse five says, for his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. Man, that's good. You know, anger and favor, they contrast, but moment in life, they contrast too. God may be angry for a moment, but I can trust that his favor over my life, over your life, is for a lifetime. It says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. How do we access that joy? Like we said, weeping was an action. You know, joy, in order for it to be experienced, I have to do something with it. I got to draw the water of joy and I have to rejoice. Psalm 18 verse 24 says, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will circle that word will. This is a choice. I will do this, not because of how I feel feel, not because of my circumstances. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This day God made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. It doesn't matter how I feel. It doesn't matter what the news says. It doesn't matter what this person tells me I should feel. I choose to be happy today because this is the day the Lord has made. Amen. You know, I told you the story. We had our dog Minion before Caitlin and Tyler stole her. You know, that we would, in the morning, we would sing, this is the day that the Lord has made. And this dog, she would, just teasing guys, she would just, she would just bounce, she would jump. This is why I go up here and pray Sunday morning. Not because I feel like it, but, I, but because this is the day that the Lord has made. I am choosing to rejoice. Last night, they were teasing me at the, uh, at the revival for the way that I, I worship the Lord. And they were telling me that some of the kids were like, hey, mommy, look what I'm doing. Uh, they said, what is it? The pastor, Chris. <laughs> and I'm like, that's awesome. Why don't you guys come to church and out pastor Chris me? You know? And why, but why do, why do I do the pastor, Chris? Because I am choosing to rejoice. I'm gonna grab a hold of that wellspring and I am going to rejoice. This is the day the Lord has made. I might come, wake up feeling one way, but I'm not gonna stay that way. Because I mean, one thing, I'm terrible at faking it. What you see is what you get with me all the time. And so when, I, when I'm, if, if I'm feeling bad, man, I have got to rejoice. I have got to confess. I have got to speak the word of God so that my friends, turns upside down, you know, so I don't have the, what's that term, the, the faith? RBF. RBF, yes. So I don't have resting believer's face. You know, some of us have that resting believer's face, you know, and so we gotta, we gotta, you know, start speaking the word of God, start speaking joy to turn that frown upside down, you know. <laughs> And so we, we, Paul's done this. We, we've talked about this the last couple of weeks, how him and Silas, they were in prison. You know, things were looking bad. I'm sure depression was trying to come on them. What did they do? They started praising the Lord. At midnight, they're like, boys, it looks like nothing's gonna happen, so let's just start rejoicing and praising the Lord. No matter the situation, I'm gonna praise the Lord. Sometimes God is a, doesn't, ch doesn't change your situation first. He wants to change you in your situation. Amen. And so when you begin to change your perspective in that, your perception in that situation, then things begin to change on, on the outside. Now, many of us struggle by thinking ourselves happy in our life because we think that our best days are behind us. You know, we look at what's happening in the world. We look about what's happening in the economy. We, we remember the failures in our lives and, and this happened and this happened. But my friends, I wanna promise you, your best days are still ahead of you. To have that mindset over yourself in everything that you do. There was a season in our lives where I thought that my best days were behind me. You know, I thought, man, you know, God was done with me. God wasn't going to use me in ministry anymore. I struggled with depression. And I was like, man, God, my best days are behind me. It's done. 
You know, I was, I was struggling just to even work. I got a, jo- I got a job at the time at, uh, at Chick-fil-A making eight, this is, this is when I'm 30, how old was I, 40 years, 39, 40 years old. I got a job at Chick-fil-A making $8 an hour when they said, hey, you know, we're gonna pay you $8 an hour. I was like, okay, because that's all I felt I was worth. You know, I was at such a bad place that I didn't think, I thought my best days were behind me. Until God, Nathan was talking, saying, he said, son, do this. And I was like, God, same thing to me. He was speaking to my heart. He's saying, son, your best days are ahead of you. It's time to get up. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Wash your face. Put your big boy pants back on. And start serving the Lord. Amen. 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 So I just, so sometimes we think that the, the, our best days are behind us, but listen, God has something great for you, but what do you have to do? You have to believe it and begin to walk in it. So we're gonna go through seven points here this morning so that we can exercise this happiness in our life. Number one is we have to think thankful thoughts. Number one is you gotta think thankful thoughts. I didn't give you this verse, but Proverbs 23, seven says, for a, ma- a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. How you think in your heart determines who you are. And so if you wanna change your outside, you gotta begin to change your inside and your mind. You gotta begin to believe what the word of God says about you. Stop listening to the report of the world. Stop listening to the report of the devil and begin to listen to the report of the Lord. Man, listen, the devil is always trying to come against you. Don't get all worked up saying, oh man, the devil's coming at me. He's doing this. Listen, when the devil comes messing, God begins blessing. And so I want you to remember that he has blessing in your life again. Amen? Amen. And so Philippians chapter four, verse eight says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are on CNN, whatever things, oh wait, how did that get in there? No, he says, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, praise the Lord, meditate on these things. Let your mind begin to think about that. As you begin to think about these things, man, your everything's gonna change. Okay, your, your perception's gonna change. Your mood's gonna begin to change. Begin to think yourself happy by thinking thankful thoughts. Most people aren't happy because they're always complaining about something instead of rejoicing. You know, that's like kind of the, our, our default human nature is I'm gonna complain about whatever. Man, I want you to challenge yourself to go through one day, actually challenge yourself to go through one afternoon and not complain about something. Take the challenge. This is the Pastor Chris challenge. I'm not gonna complain about something. Every time you feel complaining wanting to come out, silence your mouth. And if it does, say, forgive me, Father, and then rejoice about something instead. And as you do one day or one afternoon, you begin to to quiet the complaining and you begin to rejoice in the Lord instead. Find something. What can you rejoice about? I don't know about you. I mean, I rejoice that I'm saved. I rejoice I'm going to heaven. I rejoice that my sins have been cast from the east as from the west, right? I mean, I I can rejoice, I can name it. Rejoice my wife, my children. I can rejoice that I'm still alive drawing breath. Amen. Rejoice about something. Take one day, try it, and see what God does in you. See how you feel afterwards. Begin to speak thanksgiving. So as we think thankful thoughts, thankfulness will come out of our mouths. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16, 18 says, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing, and in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. And so if you wanna know what's God's will for me, man, you gotta rejoice. Grab a bucket and pull that joy out and begin to confess, rejoice, celebrate the goodness of God. Pray continuously and in everything, give thanks. Instead of focusing on the wrong things, the bad things, all the things that aren't working well, speak thanksgiving on what God is doing in your life. Now in Acts chapter 25, uh, verse one, We're gonna read what's happening here 
uh, with the Jews when they're complaining to Festus. They say, uh, verse one, now when Festus had come to the province after three days, he went up from Caesarea to Jerusalem. Then the high priest and the chief men of the Jews informed him against Paul and they petitioned him, asking a favor against him that he would summon him to Jerusalem while they lay in ambush along the road to kill him. Man, these guys definitely weren't thinking themselves happy. Man, these guys, this, Paul's been in jail for two years and they're still upset about it. I mean, you think two years later, you think you would have let it go, right? I mean, they are still going on, still replaying it, still telling the same story. You remember when this happened to me and you're still telling the same story again and again and again. And these guys are still upset. They aren't thinking themselves happy because they're not thinking thankful thoughts. They are allowing the spirit of offense to get a hold of their heart, which produces a bitterness and cancer inside of, your, inside of your soul. The spirit of offense. John Bevere calls it the bait of Satan. They allowed faith, uh, offense to get in their hearts instead of focusing on what is good. Church, I wanna challenge you. Think yourself happy. Don't allow offense to get inside of your heart. Don't allow it to cause division among your family. Don't allow it to cause division among your brothers and sisters in Christ. Again, focus on the word of God. Think thankful thoughts. Think yourself happy. Offense will steal your joy. I told you about that, that well of joy. Man, when you allow offense inside of you and you're just ruminating on it, you're just talking it again and again, that well begins to go down. You have a drought of joy inside of your life. And so instead, water that well so that it fills with joy with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen? Yeah, yeah, we were starting, the, the event yesterday started raining, and I don't remember what was going on, but everybody stopped and started cheering. You know, they're like, hallelujah, praise the Lord. It's like, it's raining, you know? But allow, allow the rain of joy to fill, to fill you up. Have a grateful heart. There's nothing new under the sun, my friends. You know, we look at what's all that's happening in the world right now, and we can get so worked up at, you know, like this is what the government's doing, this is what the elites are doing, you know, this is all the stuff that, that's happening out there. There's nothing new under the sun. The spirit of Antichrist has been at work for over 2,000 years because the devil doesn't know when his end is. He just trying, he tries it, and what happens every time? He loses. Be a student of history. Every single time he tries, he loses, and he loses, and he loses. The devil is a professional loser. He's gonna lose again and again. And even when the big day comes during the tribulation period, he's still gonna lose, and he's gonna lose big that time. And so put your faith and your trust in the Lord. Think yourself happy. Think thankful thoughts. So number two, happiness, will we find happiness in God's presence. We find happiness in God's presence. That's why we, we come to church, we go into prayer, we find happiness in God's presence. Psalm 16 verse 11 says, you will show me the path of life. I love this. In your presence is fullness of joy. Not just a little bit of joy, not just a drizzle of joy, fullness of joy every single aspect of your life. God doesn't want to give you joy in this part of your life and misery over here. He gives you fullness of joy, but that's found in his presence. So what does that tell me? Where should I be? I mean, you know, where do I need to go? I need to go in God's presence so that I can have fullness of joy. He says, at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Now, this is a different word. Pleasure, that happens in the physical, okay? You know, and so, so not only does he give that well fill up with fullness of joy, when I rejoice and I get in his presence, happiness comes in my life. And so, so we've, got to, we've got to get in his presence. But, have, but, but what if you're in a place in your life like, man, I feel like I can't get in God's presence. You know, I've had this tragedy or this thing or the enemies beat me down in this way. And we all have a different story to tell. And we've all been there at some point in our life, okay? I mean, including myself. We've all been there where we felt empty on the inside, right? Where the well has gone, gone dry. And it's like I try to pray and like there's nothing. I feel like God's not there. Anybody else been there? Like you're talking, you're doing what is right. And like, man, God, where, where are you? And so Kelly, come on up here. I need you to, to, to come here. 
This is my lovely wife, Kelly Sakai. Give her a round of applause. She's so awesome. <laughs> Baby, I want you to stand right there in that black box right there. So if I'm over here and I'm feeling empty, I'm feeling sad, like I just need a little bit of my sweet honey pie over there. But how do I get, but what do I do? I've got to, I, I can't stand over here and be feeling sorry for myself. You know, where's the joy? Where's the, you know, where's the little something, something? You know, I've got to be like, I'm going <laughs> to, the Bible, the Bible says, if you draw near to me, I will draw near to you. Not saying when you feel like drawing near. I choose by my will, believing the word of God to rejoice, and I draw near. And when I draw near, come here, baby, you got to draw near to me. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Now, that's right, Still good, but go back in the box. <laughs> here, I need some of you guys to come up here. James, Tyler, Cameron, Gavin. Now, come on up on the stage. Undelay. Get in between us. <laughs> That's not where I was going, Trevor, but yes. <laughs> so sometimes we feel like there are, there are obstacles in, in, in our way. And we're like, man, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to get, yeah, stop, stop me when I'm trying to get to, get to, get to my wife. So, so you feel like they're, they're trying to stop. They're trying, oh, all these things are trying to stop me and to get into the presence of the Lord. And so we can be like, I, I got this obstacle, I got this obstacle, I got this feeling, I got this th feeling. Now, what moves the obstacles out of our way? What was that? Say it louder. Pray. We got, yeah, praise and prayer. And so that whenever I find myself where I feel like I can't get to the Lord, I'm going to go into my prayer closet and I'm like, man, I'm praying and I just feel like nothing's coming out. I stop praying and I begin praising. I stop praying about whatever is on my list and I begin, Lord, I, pr I bless you. I praise you. I don't feel it. But when I don't feel it, you know what I do? I get louder. I jump higher. I shout loud. I confess it more and more and more. When I don't feel it, I just keep saying it again and again until my feelings to, uh, catch up with my faith. And as I praise the Lord, everything, all the distractions get out of my... Thank you, Jesus. They get out of my way. And as I, as I draw near to the Lord after that praise, he draws near to me. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You did awesome. Give them a round of applause. Yeah. So we find happiness in God's presence. Psalm 34, 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed or happy is the man who trusts in him. Man, you want to walk in happiness? You have to trust him. And the Lord begin to believe what this word says and believe what this word says about you. you begin to say it until you're again, until your feelings and your brain catch up with your faith and taste and see. He wants you to try them. You're like, well, I don't know if this works. Well, stop saying that. Just try, try doing it. You know what I mean? Like I'm talking to these guys sometimes like, oh, I really want a girlfriend. Do you ever talk to girls? Oh, I can't do that. I'm on TikTok, you know, doing whatever. Listen, man, you got to have a little bit of confidence, son. She doesn't know what she's missing. You got to walk in with that kind of assurance. Put your head up. Well, I ain't the best looking dude. Well, neither am I. But look, see, God, God, you know what I'm saying? You got to have some confidence. <laughs> Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed or happy is the man who trusts in him. Psalm 37, 4 says, delight yourself in the Lord. Every morning, delight yourself. God, you are so good. 
There's nothing better than you. As you delight yourself in the Lord, he gives you the desires of your heart. God is the God who wants to reward you. He wants to bless you. He has things as a good father he wants to give you, but you got to delight yourself in him. Man, I feel like God doesn't ever answer my prayers. Well, stop with that sulky whatever. You know, begin to think yourself happy. Delight yourself in God. Lord, you are so good. Paul's in prison for two years, wrongly accused. Comes out, I think myself happy. I am not going to allow my circumstances or my situation to change me. I am going to grab a hold of that joy and I'm going to be the one to change my circumstances. Amen? Like We talk about that with, with, with giving and things like that. Our church is not going to be a church that is in need of stuff. We are, we are going to be a church that meets the needs of others, both financially, spiritually, emotionally. That's the church that God has called us, called us to be. And so that's the same principle here. We delight ourselves in the Lord, and he gives us the desires of our heart. You want God to answer your prayers? Think yourself happy. Delight yourself in God's presence. Psalm 102, serve God with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Man, that's why we sing these songs in church. Well, I'm just waiting to hear what the preacher got to say to just to give me that little something that I need to get through the week. Man, you're gonna be starving by the time it, you know, you it's two o'clock in Sunday afternoon. You know, you you've got to you've got to serve the Lord with gladness. Make a choice. Come before him with singing. Well, that's just not my background. That's not who I am. Listen, when you get to heaven, you're gonna be in for a rude awakening. You think this church is charismatic? I got some news for you. Man, we are so tame compared to heaven. All right? So you might as well get used to it now. You know what I mean? So jump in both feet. Amen. These verses that I'm giving you, you guys, you can write these down or go back and listen to them, but you should read these every day. Encourage yourself in them. Isaiah 61.10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. Now, I'm not gonna give him a little, little praise, little shout. My Jesus is all right, just fine. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. Man, I'm gonna grab that well, that bucket, man. I'm gonna give God the biggest praise there is. I'm gonna celebrate his goodness from the moment that I wake up to the time that I go to bed. I'm gonna, I'm just, you gotta get up and celebrate his goodness. Man, we're living in a day and age. You get up and I start speaking a tongue before I even get out of bed, beginning to celebrate God's goodness, trusting in him. He says, my soul shall, this is a choice. Circle that word, shall. My soul shall. I'm choosing by my will to be joyful in my God. Why? Because he's awesome. Because for he has clothed me with a garment of salvation. And like we talked about a few weeks ago, he has covered me with the robe of righteousness. Man, it's not my right. He has covered me. The enemy can't see anything else. When the father looks at me, he doesn't see what I did to here, here, here. He sees the righteousness of Christ inside of me, on me. It covers everything. And when we begin to believe that we are covered with the righteousness of God, our behavior begins to change. We begin to act according to who God says we are. Don't try to be somebody first for the Lord, and then it'll be, it's never going to work. You believe, you believe what the word of God says about you, that you are clothed with this righteousness. Then you begin to change, but it comes from belief. Uh, let's go to the next. So now, number two was happiness. We find happiness in God's presence. Number three, we find happiness in God's love. <clears throat> Nehemiah 8.10 says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now joy is from the, the fruit of the spirit is love and it's manifested in one of the ways is joy. So the, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Psalm 126.3 says, the Lord has done great things for us and we, circle the word, are glad. Again, it's by my will that I'm choosing to be glad. I find happiness in the love of the Lord. Zephaniah 3.17 says, the Lord your God is in your midst. The mighty one will save. 
He will rejoice. Now, I love this one because this is him doing this for you. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Let's take that in for a second. You're rejoicing in the Lord. Man, he is rejoicing over you. He's rejoicing over you. You look at me and say, man, how, what is God, how could God ever use me? Listen, when God looks at you, when he thinks about you, he rejoices. It fills him with gladness. The Bible says that you are God's reward. You know, we delight ourselves in the Lord. He gives us the desires of our heart. He rewards us. But you are God's reward. Jesus died on the cross to redeem you by his grace, to be in the family of God. He purchased you. You were that priceless treasure that he, he died for. So rejoice over that. Romans 8, verse 28 through 39. And I love this one. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. Think yourself happy. Happiness is found in God's love. And everything works out for good for those who love God to those who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, God had predestined you. He had determined that you would be in the image of his son. He's not done working on you. Your best days are ahead of you. He, he, he is that potter molding you like clay and he is not finished with you yet. So that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Verse 30, moreover, whom he predestined these, he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. Praise the Lord. That is done, you are glorified. And he says, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. But he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us, for us all, how shall he not with, with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore also has risen. And so um, let's jump down to verse 35. It says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril, or sword. Verse 37 says, yet in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded, hello you guys, that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities nor powers, nor things present nor things to come, nor height nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Right. Amen. So celebrate, find happiness in God. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. So don't be walking away, getting distracted. Say, Lord, I think myself happy because you loved me first. Amen. Number four, happiness in God's word. We find happiness in God's word. You're like, man, I, I, need, I need some help thinking myself happy. Read the Bible. Say it with me. Read the Bible. Read the Bible and ask the Holy Spirit to make it alive to you when you read it. Psalm 119.11 says, your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever. Again, I have taken. You do this by my will for they are the rejoicing of my heart. Jeremiah 15.16 says, your words were found and I ate them. Well, that seems weird. You know, your words were found and I ate them. But it's not weird because the Bible is not an instruction book. It is food. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I consume the word of God and it brings life into my whole being. So your words are found and I ate them. And your word was to me the joy, the well, and rejoicing, I speak it out, of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord of hosts. Jesus talks to us in John 15, 11. These things I have spoken to you. This is, he's talking about, I am the vine, you are the branches, that verse. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you. That your joy may be full. 
So he says, listen, you abide in me, my words abide in you, my joy is gonna remain inside of you, amen? Number five, happiness, we have happiness through trust in God. You gotta trust the Lord. Proverbs 16, 20 says, he who heeds the word wisely will find good, and whoever trusts in the Lord, happy he is. You wanna be happy? Trust in the Lord. Uh, let's, uh, John 16, 24, Jesus talking again. Until, you have asked, until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. God wants to answer those prayers. He wants to, he wants to do it in your life. Um, let's skip down to um, uh, 1 Peter 1, verse 8 and 9. He says, Whom have, having not seen, you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing. We, it's, when we believe in the Lord, we can access that joy. He says, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. Now, we got two more here. The worship team, you guys can start getting ready. Number six is happiness through generosity. Proverbs 11, verse 25 says, the generous soul will be made rich. And he who waters will also, be, will also be watered himself. And so this principle here, he says, as I give, he says, you can believe to receive. As you water, you will be watered. So as you invest in the kingdom of God or you sow into someone else's life, he's saying, as you water, you will be watered. You mean I need some happiness? Man, give to someone else, whether it's through finances, whether it's through service, I always tell people, man, you want the joy of the Lord to be exercised in your life? Go do something for somebody else. You want blessing in your life? Go bless somebody else. Amen? Amen. So there's happiness found through generosity. Acts 20, 35 says, I have shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And so we find happiness through generosity. This is why we do hope and action. You know, and as we go and we sow into the kingdom, as we are feeding other people, both physical food, but also the bread of life, man, God rewards that in abundance inside of you. Amen. And so finally, number seven, the seventh key uh, for happiness is ha we find happiness through gratitude and praise. Again, we don't just have these songs just for, for whatever. You know, it's not just I'm singing a song. It's just, it's not, worship isn't just part of a service, like a song service. We are to praise the Lord. If you want to activate happiness in and through your life, you have to be grateful, amen, and you have to praise the Lord. Psalm 28, 7 says, The Lord is my strength and shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices. Not barely rejoices, not quietly rejoices. Greatly rejoices, and with my song, I will praise him. Sometimes, like I said, if you need, I need to exercise happiness in my life, what do you do? It's not saying, oh, Lord. The devil's at it again. He's such a big meanie. If it's your will, there's a slim chance. Make me happy. That's something good come in my life. Because this happened to me, and that happened to me, and this is what's going on in the world. Like, you don't know, Lord, but I'm going to tell you. <laughs> no, man, if you want to change, you start celebrating the goodness of God. Begin to praise. You've got to have thanksgiving. You've got to be grateful. If you want something different to happen in your life, man, go and grab it in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Don't be passive and sitting on your hands and being like, you know, Lord, please do this for me. He's like, I already did it. It's like I've told you, my kids saying, Mommy, I'm hungry. 
I just went shopping, go in the kitchen and get it. Do I look like the maid or the cook or whatever? You know, it's already been done for you. I'm done. Kelly's like, I'm not doing any more work. There's a frozen pizza in the freezer. Go and grab it. God has already done it for you. Grab a hold of it. Begin to thank him for it. Begin to believe it. Receive it. Rejoice in it. Amen? I'm going to read you a couple more verses. Worship team, come on out because we're going to begin to praise the Lord here. Psalm 32, 11 says, Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you, you righteous. Who in this house is wearing the robe of righteousness this morning? Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to be glad. I'm going to rejoice and shout. He didn't say I'm going to whisper with joy. Meekly. I'm going to shout for joy. Jesus, everybody's being loud, but I want to make sure you hear me. I want him to hear me because I think I'm his favorite. Jesus, I love you. I want you to hear me over everybody else. <laughs> I'm here, Jesus. I love you. Psalm 63, 7 says, Because you have been my help, therefore in the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. Man, I, I find that comfort in him. Lord, you have my back. The world may be throwing something at me, but I'm not gonna fear because you're bigger than them. My daddy is bigger than yours. Amen? Amen. Psalm 95, verse one through two says, oh, come, not just stay there and sit there. He says, oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyful to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. Psalm 126.3 says, the Lord has done great things for us. Has he done thing, great things for you? Yeah. Come on, shout. Has he done great things for you? So we are, circle the word are, we are present tense, glad. Philippians 4.4 4 says, rejoice in the Lord when you come to church. No, rejoice in the Lord always. Again. I say what? Rejoice. Rejoice. And finally, Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, and um, admonishing one another in psalms and hymns. Well, I'm just singing just to the Lord, so it doesn't matter how I do it. It's not just for you. When you rejoice, it builds the faith of the person standing next to you. It's not just about you. This is why we do it corporately. It's not just me and the Lord. No, 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 no. We are the body of Christ. We are our family. As I celebrate and as I rejoice in faith, he says it admonishes one another. We do it in psalms, in hymns, in spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Amen. So we are going to do an altar call today, but we are going to do it different than any other altar call we ever have. And I'm expecting you guys to come and celebrate and rejoice in the Lord. If you came in here today with a heaviness inside of you, you came in here with some, something you're believing God for, you came in here, man, I, I, I need this breakthrough in my life. We're not gonna come here and kneel down and say, Lord, please do this. What we're gonna do is you're gonna grab a hold of it today. You're gonna walk out with the victory that belongs to you in Jesus' name, amen? You're gonna walk out in freedom in Jesus' name, but you're gonna grab a hold of it. How are you gonna do that? I'm gonna think myself happy today. I'm gonna grab, grab a hold of the wellspring of joy that God has provided for me, and I am going to rejoice in the Lord. You're like, man, I'm just not feeling it. Praise louder. I'm feeling sad. Shout louder. Yeah. I got depression hanging on me. Jump higher. Yeah. I'm feeling weary. Dance loud, bigger. Hello. If you want to shake off the works of the enemy on your life, you got to praise the Lord. Amen? Yeah. So the worship team's going to start to play. 
And I don't, don't sit there and wait for something to happen. You be the person. I'm going to come before the Lord. I'm going to celebrate his goodness. I'm going to come to this altar and I'm going to praise and shout to the Lord. So if you need freedom in your life, come up here to the front. Come on. Come up to the front and begin to shout to the Lord. This is not the time to leave. Stay in this church and worship the Lord. Uh, there we go. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. No matter. Praise cause you rose and defeated 